Hello everyone, this is something I'm actually very excited about. I found it on Tumblr. And yes. Yes, it's shameful. It's shameful. Shameful. It's a Gravity Falls dating simulator. <laughs> Ah, good old road trip, full of promise, and right, with potential for adventure, soul searching, and incredible scenery. <laughs> or at least that's what you thought before the novelty wore thin. As of now, your legs are cramping up. You've exhausted your travel playlist two times over, and your stomach is begging for something neat. On top of that, you're pretty sure you're lost. Yeah, that sounds like me. <laughs> Driving through the Oregon paints a picture of trees, trees, and more trees, especially on endless winding roads that you're taking up north. All that breaks the pattern and sign that zips past with the words that you're able, just able to make out. Gravity Falls. <laughs> the road continues on, giant redwoods looming on both sides. You find yourself anticipating something because as you drive on, you feel it. Something strange is bound to happen here. Yeah, something strange indeed. <laughs> Something weird, yep. <laughs> and that's when it happens, your car picks up speed. <laughs> oh no, the chains came out of nowhere and you quickly put your foot on the brakes. But horrifyingly, the car seems to be driving on its own willpower. Oh no! Trying to stay calm despite the panic welling in your chest, you pull the emergency brake only to find the car resist and keeps moving forward like something is pulling it. The car begins to rattle and the wheel screech against the country road and you're screaming until... Ouch. <laughs> Crash. One thing I almost forgot to mention is when I found this on Tumblr. Apparently, Alex Hirsch himself has inspected and approved this game. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, I'm just, I'm just gonna let you see. I'm just gonna let you see. It's not a typical dating sim, and it's not like there's a bunch of options. Just, just watch. There's smoke. Why is there smoke? Oh gosh. You cough, fumble for the door, and manage to undo the lock just before the door is wrenched outward from your grasp. Something lands on your shoulder. A hand. Are you alright? <gasps> it's Ford! Hi, Ford! A man stands at your open car door. His hand on your sh <laughs> his shoulder leaves. Tilt your head up. And he flashes at and pulls a flashlight from his coat, shining it in your eyes. Two blinks, and he lets your chin go. His eyes dart over the rest of you, looking for injuries. Still stunned, all you do is watch. What's your name? That regular person. <laughs> could be the regular person. <laughs> I'm Raven. Pronouns. Okay, so they have all of these ones. Well, I go by both of these, but... This is what I was born as. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. I don't I don't even want to read out loud that part. <laughs> oh man. I'm blushing in real life, you can't see me. Or it's my favorite grunkle. <laughs> you seem fine as far as I can tell, but you shouldn't head back out there anytime soon. Where on earth were you driving in such a hurry? You open your mouth to explain when a voice calls from inside the house. <laughs> What's funny is I actually have a friend whose last name is Pointex. <laughs> so, this burned up in one of your experiments again. I've had this place rebuilt too many times to... <laughs> the owner of the voice walks out of the house and stops like John at the side of your car. In the side... And... In the side of you, you're guessing his house. You must have hit your head earlier because you could swear you're seeing double. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. I'm not gonna read out loud all of it. Uh, my throat is sore. So forgive me, guys. What? This has nothing to do with me. It's <laughs> just the gun again in. It must have pulled this victim of circumstance into the house. Because <laughs> it is entirely my fault. I'm incredibly sorry. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ford. I could have died. I could have died. Look what you've done to me. I could have died. You had better make it up to me. <laughs> Cry. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, yeah, what would I do in this situation? <sighs> oh man, I'd probably just still be in shock. Oh man. Uh, I would probably do all of the above. Is there no all of the above? Click, 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 click. We'll pick this one. Not sure of why you're reassuring this mystery man who just freaked your car. You <laughs> awkward shrug. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> no, I must have done something wrong. A wire mix-up, perhaps, or what? Okay, whatever. Big words. <laughs> They're talking about your <laughs> oh. Oh, right. Hey, look, it's fine. Sure, there's didn't to check signage and a crack in the windshield that looks like an almond's triangle, but I'm sure she'll still. <laughs> oh no, almond is triangle. <laughs> <sighs> the art style of this is really good. The fact that they got away and actually made a game like this. Man, I've seen so many projects for fan games. Like, there's a Sherlock RPG maker looking fan game that somebody's been working on for a long time that's still not done. It's like, I think some. This stuff. Props, props. This takes a lot of hard work to make games. I did not mean to hit the mic. <laughs> you try to start up the car, it sputters, but ultimately nothing happens. Well, it. Probably not. You feel like crying. Oh. Well, let's call a tow truck for this unfortunate soul here and forget all <laughs> You're right, it is cheaper to tow it yourself. <laughs> oh man. Can you stop calling your own brother that nickname? He hates it. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Again, I'm not reading everything. My throat hurts. <laughs> it does. I need a drink after this. Aliens. You can't see me because I don't have the webcam on, but I'm doing the little meme thing with my hands. Aliens. Now nah, you kidding me? It'd be some sort of miracle worker to bring this baby back to life in this miracle worker is on vacation. Oh man. Okay, so Ford and Stanley turn away and you're left to your thoughts. Who can anticipate a car accident like this in the middle of a road trip? You can take care of the car, but how are you going to get home? They run buses out here, right? So you can take a bus out of here then and then... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Ford clears his throat, shifting a little awkwardly in place. Seems like they finished their talk. So there are a few options. My brother Stanley here could drive you out of town to find a place to stay for the night, or you could stay the night here. We have some maps information you can look at in the gift shop, and in the morning we can help you with your car. What do you say? Just as you're about to answer, another high-pitched voice comes from inside the house. Oh, <laughs> I see. I just noticed that shooting star in the corner too. Crinkle Stan, picture this: a whole week of oh my gosh. Yes, it is Mabel! I love Mabel! <laughs> the girl that runs out of the house comes to a halt in the side of your car. Oh, great! <laughs> Crocker Ford! Why is it everyone automatically thinks I'm at fault? <laughs> well, this time it is my fault. <laughs> but I've invited Raven here to stay with us for the night if she'd like. I'm sure I can fix this, I just have to figure it out. <laughs> Little <laughs> Mabel's face, she looks so worried, poor girl. Uh, Stanley sighs. I can take a look. Uh, being on vacation is pretty boring, and the old Stanmobile hasn't needed a tune up yet, so it wouldn't be too bad to work on something in the meantime. Thank you, Stanley. I'm sure I can put something together from gadgets I have laying around if you need any specialized tools to help you with the job. And let me introduce myself, I'm Mabel. <laughs> Mabel. <laughs> oh man, again, you can't see me. I'm doing the peace signs on both my hands right now. I love Mabel. <laughs> oh, she's my favorite of the younger twins, while Ford's my favorite of the Grunkle twins. <laughs> and yet I cosplay Dipper in real life. Okay, you can ask me anything. I pretty much know everything there is to know about this place. Oh, wait, hold on! I haven't even said anything yet. I appreciate your offer to let me stay. And to repair your car. 
Yeah, it'll be good as new in my hands. <laughs> I mean, look at my stamp. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dan, shut up. <laughs> she's been through a ringer who knows how many times. And she's a beaut. Yeah, right. No, that's not. That red car is not good. He points out a red car parked in distance, a distance away. You can't really see how beautiful it is. It does just my sounds real confident. Yeah, it's not a beautiful car. <laughs> It turns events is fortuitous or suspicious. Well, in the case of a car accident, this would probably be better. Free repairs, free lodging, there's no better deal to be found if things don't work out. The town probably has some sort of auto repair shop you can head to instead. Well, I accept the actual help. <laughs> My apologies again. What an embarrassment. I must have made such an elementary mistake. <laughs> Oh. oh man, as the pines lead you inside the house, Mabel leaves her number in your phone for you to call whenever, and you find out that Ford's twin goes by stand. <laughs> this part the house, but just outside the door is the mystery shack. Hey, you ever been to the mystery shack before? <laughs> and I wanted to actually. I saw a bumper stick while I was on the road and got curious. Uh, <laughs> you're interrupted by a loud tramp and ha! <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> I still can't believe I'm playing this. <laughs> oh man. Those bumper stickers were a good investment, and again, he hates that nickname. So I'm not saying it because it's mean to my favorite one. <laughs> Says they're too plain and graphically simplistic. They don't even have an address on them. Stanley, how is it anyone supposed to find the place? Yeah, that sounds like him. To attract customers. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, just... <laughs> well, they are graphically simplistic. I don't know how she found the place, let alone thought what is the mystery shack was compelling. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I kind of liked it. <laughs> See, she kind of liked it. Hey, I like you. How about I give you a tour sometime tomorrow? Regular price. Oh man, <laughs> and Mabel comes in tomorrow. Then I'll have to squeeze all my get to know you questions in today. Raven, tell me. <laughs> oh, capybara, yes or no? At that moment, a boy passes in the hallway at the far doorway, and Ford calls out to him. It's Dipper, isn't it? Yep, Dipper, my boy. I'm surprised I didn't see you run out to the scene of the crime. <laughs> yeah, the car wreck that you caused. <laughs> my gosh. This is beautiful. They're so freaking canon. Oh, and he's still got me he's still got Wendy's hat. That's adorable. So I'm gonna guess they're still 13 at this time. I Meaning it's the next year after the first one takes place if he's in Wendy's hat. Crime, what crime? I have an alibi, I swear- Oh, you have just- <laughs> What did you <laughs> Dipper, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> crime, what- Yeah, I almost reread that again. Hey, haha, I'm not suspicious at all. <laughs> did you guys see that car in the side of the shack though? For a second I thought the main doors were back with the crime. I can't stop laughing. I'm horrible. I'm horrible at this. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yes, about that dipper. Meet Raven. I've uh, stranded her car here by accident. She's staying here for the time being. Sorry, I stranded her car here. <laughs> you crashed it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the S in the shack fell on it and everything, and the windows are cracked. One window, <laughs> the windshield. And Raven was lucky to make it alive, I know, right? <laughs> She's fine, no injuries, thankfully. The magnet guns were rather safe despite never having been tested in a formal setting. Yeesh, did you not, like, take safety precautions or anything? Actually, the irony of the situation is that I was trying to install a safety precaution. <laughs> Oh no. Hey, hey, if you two are gonna do your nerd talk, I'm gonna get Raven set up. Oh man. Mabel, sweetie, why don't you show Raven around? Let her stay in uh, the storage room. That's still empty, right? <laughs> I'll make it empty. <laughs> She's so cute. 
The rest of the day consists of Mabel showing you the storage room you'll be staying in, then the kitchen, living room, the hallway, and the bathroom, and pretty much a comprehensive tour of the mundanity, eh, mundanities of a regular house. Eventually, you find out that the family is even more extended than you know. The decorative doilies make a lot more sense knowing grandmother normally lives here and her grandson, Zeus. Or is it Zeus? <laughs> Whatever the name, you look forward to meeting him when he comes for work in the morning. When you go up to the attic, Mabel opens the door to re reveal Dipper, no stuck in his book, but you catch him occasionally glancing up at you as he pretends to read. The next member of the family snorts up at you from Mabel's bed, a rotund pig, who Mabel declares as her best friend and partner in crime waddles. The two are a perfect match, right down to the chubby cheeks and boopable noses. Oh! <laughs> I had to do the big noises. I don't know how well they sound through this microphone. And in the evening, though, you'd still been in disbelief over the state of your car. The family dinner and after dinner TV marathon you've been invited to made it seem like a normal guest day rather than a forced circumstance. Returning to the storage room Mabel had shown you earlier, you find an air mattress waiting for you and more pillows and sheets than the summer night warrants. And also the window still has the triangle. <laughs> you wake to a weak glare of the sun streaming in through the small high window in the wall. You can't remember your room having this kind of feature or any hotel or motel for that matter and then yesterday comes crashing back to you. You glance at the time to see that you slept into the afternoon, experiencing the accident yesterday must have left you tired. Despite having been assured yesterday, even that you were free to anything in the fridge, you still feel like you're imposing on the Pines family and try preparing a polite, as polite a guest breakfast as you can. You wash your dishes in the sink before you leave and just about to exit the kitchen you bump into Ford. Hi, <laughs> <I> Ford. <laughs> Excuse. Oh, ah. <laughs> You're yes from yesterday, of course. For a good solid moment, Ford regards you in awkward, in awkward silence. <laughs> dot dot. More dots. Ford clears his throat. I believe Stanley's taking a look at your car outside. If you want to be there for it, you give a nod and make to leave for real this time. When Fork speaks up, uh, Ford's I almost said Fork. <laughs> <laughs> and Raven, I'm sorry again for the accident. If I'd been smarter about, well, let's just say it's entirely my fault and you shouldn't worry about this at all. <laughs> when it comes down to it, Stanley does have a neck for cars. I predict you'll be back on the road in a matter of weeks. Weeks, you can't keep the dismay off your face and can't really bring yourself to try it either. What am I going to do with weeks? <laughs> Ford, who'd gone kind of uncomfortable and closed off when your face fell, recovers at the prospect of a question he can answer. Well, there's a town to tour, of course, and the mystery shack, but if you ask me, all that pales in comparison to- Hold on, do you hear that? Ford turns to the kitchen doorway to investigate. Sounds like the sound comes again, and this time you hear it as well, the squeal of a pig, followed by a pair of quick footsteps running down the stairs. Waddles tumbles past the open kitchen doorway and Mabel comes into view soon after, a few sheets of paper clutched in hand. Ford steps quickly out of the kitchen and you follow to the doorway, getting there in time to see the apparent tug of war between Mabel and her pig over a saliva covered sheet of paper. The paper rips and after nearly toppling backwards from her efforts, Mabel recovers, snatching the scrap of ripped paper from Waddles' jaws and lifting both pieces up victoriously. <laughs> Ha-ha! Mabel wins again! Now I just gotta find Grunkle Ford. <laughs> Ford who'd run forward and held out to steady this energetic child. Sorry, I'm reading out loud and again my voice hurts. This is just freaking crazy, but I'm not gonna freaking leave the long dialogue for you guys to read. I'll save that for the other games, <laughs> as I've been doing in the past. I'm horrible at this. Uh, when she'd been in danger of tumbling over. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now finds a number of crumpled sheets of paper shoved into his hands. Mabel tugs urgently at his coat. 
Oh no, Coco Ford, you've got to help me! <laughs> Ford kneels down to face Maple with a serious though concerned look. Slow down, Maple, what's the matter? Tipper found a stack of pages from your old journals and I walked in and Waddles ran up starting to eat one and he must have been chewing on it to warn me, Coco Ford, because look! Mabel takes the ripped halves of the paper back from Ford's hand and joins them together, holding it up so Ford can see. Hmm, I see, and you took this as a warning? Yes, it says that it eats small dogs and Waddles is a small pig, but it sort of looks like a dog from far away and Waddles must have feared for his life. <laughs> Waddles seems to second this notion with a snort. <coughs> okay, I just breathed in heavily and I sounded wrong. <laughs> I try to be a pig and I can't be a pig. Okay, or not, as it seems the pig is lounging adorably a short distance away in the hallway. Aww. Piggy pig. We can't imagine what this dangerous predator could be. Some kind of wolf? Something bigger? You're suddenly not so keen on staying anymore. <laughs> Remember the pterodactyl I told you about? Well, I was so scared at the time. I can't let him leave my side. Pterodactyl, you suppose pigs are allowed in museums around here? Ooh. Ooh, yeah, my character doesn't realize the dinosaurs are alive. And I'm gonna add on in the middle here, because... Well, I don't even know if this is gonna be the middle of the video. I don't know how long I'm gonna make it yet. Probably an hour. I don't know yet. <laughs> how long would people watch it? Uh, <laughs> embarrassment. But I am gonna put the link in the description for it, because it is a free game. And... Hopefully, the creators have an option to donate because, I mean, this so far, like, the art style and the story, it's well written and it looks really good so far. Right now, it doesn't even seem like a dating sim. It just seems like a decent fan fiction where you're involved in this stuff. But soon, soon, it's gonna get to some more options. <laughs> or if you're a Gravity Falls fan and have seen videos like this before, you already know what it is. And this is just somebody different playing it. I hope I'm a little more interesting. I don't mean to sound monotone, because again, my throat is sore, and I keep saying that. This isn't a live stream where you have to repeat it for the new people, I'm sorry. Okay, moving on. <laughs> how, <laughs> how about I finish that repellent I never got around to completing? That'll keep Wallace safe from harm. Maybe flops down on the floor in relief. Kirk of Ford, you are an actual lifesaver. Wallace, you have nothing to fear. <laughs> Or chuckles, lifting himself out of the kneel and standing back up. All right, I'll get my re <laughs> I'll go get my recipe. Ford turns to leave, and you suddenly remember that with nothing better to do for weeks, you're going to be here. It wouldn't hurt to get to know Ford. He seems to know what there is to do around town, anyways, and you'll need that to not die of boredom in the first week. Or, more pressingly, you could go check on your car and see what Stan's made of it so far. You're not exactly eager to face seeing your car on the side of the house again, though. Oh, man, of course I want to freaking stay with my favorite. Come on. Ford, wait, need to end with that recipe. <laughs> like, let me hang out with Ford. He's, he's the best. <laughs> he says, I get it on myself. Of course he does. Are you sure you can use a hand? <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that when the symbols show up, it, it's for the character. Because Mabel has the shooting star and his has that golden six-fingered hand. Ford looks away then and you follow his adverted line of sight to Mabel, who just found something that you couldn't catch. When she catches you looking her way, Mabel gives you a hundred-watt smile, the picture of innocent. Ford rubs the back of his neck. <laughs> Yes, I suppose I can accept some help. And with that, assured that Ford is on the task, you spot Mabel rolling away with Waddles into the living room. Before we get started, I suppose I should give you an introduction. Raven, tell me, do you believe in the supernatural? Well, I live in a haunted house, so yes. <laughs> Not lying, I live in a haunted house. <laughs> well, you're about to come face to face with the unexplainable yourself. You see, Gravity Falls is in some quiet, unassuming Blackwater town. Much more lurks below its surface. Ward pockets the crumpled journal papers and gestures for you to join him as he walks. You do, and follow him through the living room and into the gift shop. For example, you must not must have heard Mabel mention a pterodactyl. Most would say non 
none exist in the living world today, but I say not if you know where to look. Ford reaches under the cashier counter and retrieves a package of vintage-looking gum. Expecting it for a moment before something in his pocket, he looks around in thought. Hmm. Hold on to my explanation for a moment. I need to retrieve some more supplies. Ford ushers you out the gift shop entrance so you find yourself on the outside of the shack and shuts the door behind you. Okay. Turn and try to peer through the window. Respect the man's privacy is clearly good. Okay, this game, if you know me, I'm so picking this one. The glass is dirty enough that the sunlight hitting it obscures your vision of the room within. You catch a gray and tan blur, blurry figure that must be forward at the far wall. You lean in too close and you have to step back before you leave a conspicuous handprint on the window pane. When you look back in, Ford is gone. You turn back around, you're just going to stand out here until Ford returns. Not too long later, the door opens behind you and Ford joins you outside, looking no different than before. He must have stored whatever supplies he went to retrieve in his coat, but the trench coat falls too naturally on his figure for him to be hiding much. Where were we? Ah, yes. Ford pulls out a pen and a pad of paper from his coat, walking as he writes. Just as you're about to head out, he stops and smacks his hand on his face. Oh shoot, one second. Ford hurries back to the house, realizing he forgot one important component to this adventure. A butterfly net. Oh man. Is it fairies? Are we gonna catch fairies? <laughs> I wanna go catch fairies. Before you get a chance to ask, he strides out ahead of you, obviously in no mind to tell you what it's for quite yet. Is it for fairies? <laughs> the pair of you walk past the shack and down a well-worn path into the trees surrounding the house. Sunlight peeking between the pines, he double-checks whatever he scribbled onto the paper and tucks it back in one of his coat's seemingly infinite pockets. He stops and turns to face you with a definitive nod. My recipe for repellent called for a sprig of lavender, two thin slices of ginseng, a drop of bat blood, a chunk of amber, and 3.5 milliliters of ink. Well, I wonder if that would work in real life. <laughs> That's all stuff you can get in real life. Where's the fairies? He pauses, staring down at the path and thought. Obviously, I already have all those components on hand, all except for one last ingredient, a single moss wing. Aww, I can catch moss easily. You don't need the net. They literally do just crawl on my hand outside. I love, I love holding moss. From Mothman himself. Okay, now, now I understand the butterfly net. I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. If it was a regular little moth, I could just catch it with my hands. I'm very gentle with them. You don't want to touch their wings because they have stuff on it that helps them fly. You can't help it. You gasp. Ford glances at you and you think you see a hint of a smile before he turns back to the path and continues along, wind ruffling through his hair. You see, Mothman is the very creature on that page that Waddle seems to fear. Using a piece of itself should ward it away, or at least it, to believe that Waddles isn't for eating. I would have already completed the repellent years ago if I had managed to collect that wing. Was it too difficult? Oh, I just never got around to it. Besides, Mothman used to come bad at this lamp I had lit out in the backyard. It seems like such an innocent hobby that I never had the heart to chase it off. That if this brings Mabel and her pig peace of mind, then the time has come to finish this. Sunlight filters in through the trees, causing dappled shadows across Ford's coat as he leads um, in front of you. Okay. Uh, this is something I would ask. How much further are we walking? A mile or so? While well, Mothman's home is in West Virginia, I found that he is a summer vacation home and none other than Gravity Falls. <sighs> and by home, I mean cave in the woods. It's a nice place if you like the dark. Oh, and then I could still click the other ones anyways. Let's do it. My throat hurts. You read that part. <laughs> uh... 
Okay, I'll read this. I made this exact trip years ago, though at the time I had no idea where I was going. It was just dumb luck that I managed to tail Mothman back to its cave from my backyard. Navigating the forest by moonlight is poetic, but not advisable. I made plenty of other discoveries as well, from fairies to gnomes to... What? <laughs> Stop using big words, I don't understand! <laughs> I feel so stupid. Oh man, but that... Uh, I know, I know. I I need to freaking learn this stuff. Those words. That word. I'll learn how to pronounce it and what it means eventually. Although, again, context clues, like pretty much figure out what it means. Alright, alright, whatever, whatever. <sighs> whatever, we're just gonna move on. Ward reaches into his pocket and pulls out the slightly crumpled pages. Mabel had pushed into his hands earlier, smoothing them out and shuffling through them. Take a look at these, there's more definite proof than just my word. You accept the pages from him and find that they're scanned pages from some sort of journal, just as you'd heard Mabel say. Fluid cursive of Mothman, Beard Cubs, Scamp Fires, and more. Or gestures to them and explains. I detailed my discoveries in a series of research journals, the remaining pages at least. I wonder where Stanley was keeping these. Okay, yeah, considering the art in the journal, since I've read the journal number three in real life, this. Yes, of course, who else? Oh, that, that's mean. I've seen better as mean. Hmm. This one. My work now is far better, but I appreciate the compliment. Aw. Despite his understated words, Ford looks surprisingly pleased. extremely some more worse dangerously and annoying <laughs> though Ford seems to find his own compliment amusing he doesn't fail to notice your unease I do have weapons in case things escalate so there's no need to worry you brought weapons <laughs> oh man not many I have a stun gun my fist and my sharp wit <laughs> I feel safer already <laughs> I thought it would be prudent to leave its magnetic fields alone for a while until I have the time to optimize it. You see, I was trying to widen the area of magnetic influence, but it's been a while since I last worked with the gun. I need to refamiliarize myself with its inner workings. My guess is I switched a wrong wire or two and instead narrowed the beam. I'd like to see how it works sometime. <laughs> Really, you know, if you're interested in devices like that, my old research colleague Fiddleford would have more to show you. He's the engineering genius around here. Yeah, now we can pick this one. You must have gotten up some pretty crazy stuff back then. That's one way to put it. Only took six years for me to get in over my head. He takes a silent moment to look away from your gaze, seemingly in bittersweet remembrance. Oh gosh, there's so there's so many options. Again, my throat hurts. I might just have to just read them to myself, and then when I'm done reading, hit next. And if you if that's still too fast for you, yeah, for all of these, I'm just gonna read them to myself. And if it's too fast for you, just pause the video. I kind of read fast. Okay, so turns into a bunch of moths. Oh, bird watching, that'd be nice. Can that be a date? <laughs>
No. Home to giant vampire bats. Yeah, that. Giant fruit bats, actually. Oh, man. They were the first among... His reputation. Alright, so the giant vampire bats in this... The way they put it in this story, I don't know if it's actually canon or not. They t made it like, yeah. Oh yeah, that thing. Aww. Alright, now it's time to walk in silence. Only form puts an arm out and caution, slowing his pace. You narrowly manage not to collide into him and take a quick glance around to see nothing. Look, there! You see what looks like a bundled up plaid shirt moving along the forest. Wait, is that a beaver's tail? <laughs> oh no, yes! Yes! The platypus! <laughs> the literally platypus! <laughs> what are you doing all the way out here? Oh, don't you mean platypus? Or shakes his head with a grin. I meant what I said, it's a plaid platypus. A platypus! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Ford moves into a crutch but stays at a respectful distance following the small creature. You watch him and after a moment mimic his actions. Ford giving the creature a bright smile, the first of its kind that you've seen since leaving Mabel at the shack. Aww. You're a cute one, aren't you? And one of my favorite patterns too. Aww. Or motion for you to move forward a little more to the distance he's maintaining. If I were to rate the oddities that live in this forest on a scale of the least to most annoying, these little guys would get immunity. They have done nothing wrong and I appreciate them for it. As for the two of you watch it in oh, okay, as the two of you watch in quiet appreciation, the platypus ambles into the underbrush and vanishes from you. What a cute little guy. <laughs> They are cute. <laughs> Again, if you've ever haven't read the actual printing of Journal Number Three, you should. They're so cute. The two of you continue deeper into the forest. The foliage seems denser now, and you look through the treetops for a glimpse of the sun, which is now by now dropped below in the sky. It had already been getting late when you left, but you hadn't thought Mothman would be this far out. Almost as though he read your mind, for answers for you. Mothman is rather reclusive, and as such lives deeper within the forest than bolder creatures like the gnomes. <laughs> are you alright, huh? That is, are you tired at all? I should have asked sooner. It's just been a long time since I've traveled with anyone new. Stanley uh, tends to speak his mind without my asking. Oh uh, no, no, I'm, I'm pretty honest. I would be tired after a long walk. I understand. We can rest here until sunset. Okay, why wait until sunset? You'll see. The moment the sun touches the horizon through the gaps in the treetops, Ward gestures who of you to continue. You hadn't noticed, but you'd been resting within short distance of a small clearing that holds a cylindrical stone marker. The stone marker bears intricate squirrels, eh, swirls, squirrels, squirrels! <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> Swirls carved into its surface. Ford reaches into his coat and produces the packet of gum from earlier. Open it up and dump the pieces on onto his palm. Gum? Sure. Unsure of why you came all the way out here to unwrap gum at hunt. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. At sunset, you accept a stick of gum. Ford puts the remaining gum in his coat breast pocket. He unwraps the now empty gum package to reveal that it was hiding a small piece of parchment folded up to act as lining. He smooths it out against the stone, holding it under the deep orange red light of the sunset. You step closer to look over Forge's shoulder. The parchment holds a detailed drawing of the swirls carved into the stone, documenting every crack on the surface. As you watch, a golden cursive unfolds itself across the page, seemingly fueled by the sunset's warm light. Ford reads the words as they appear. 
such a place the Mothman doth rest. But please do not disturb his nest, if kindness be something thou bearest. Ford lifts the parchment a little higher to prevent his shadow from obscuring the rest of the line. Follow thy nature and turn left. Answer is clear lift. I thought so, but it's just like, let him answer it. <sighs> left leads you to a dimly lit cave, which Ford says he remembers well, except last time he was here, it was pitch black since he arrived in the middle of the night. From its steps, you heard the faint sound of dripping water echoing off the cave shadow shrouded walls. You slow as your eyes attempt to adjust to the low light. Ford pauses it in front of you, reaching into his coat for something. Hold on, I have a flashlight in here somewhere. This cave has never received much natural light, and you see in... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of Felix now. Peter Pie. Okay, he rummages further, and you see a couple dice. The pad of paper from earlier and a quill. He has some custom pocket work going on in there, too, and you bet one of his coat's inner pockets has a pen protector in it. Here we are, at last, allow me to... Darn, out of batteries. Wait, I think I have one. You pull out your phone and turn on its flashlight. The light is small, but it does its job. Huh? You saved our hides there, <laughs> Raven. I was about to pull out a matchbook. With your light guiding the way, you and Ford move further into the cave, which yawns wide around. It isn't until the sliver of natural light from the entrance disappears that Ford speaks again. I just noticed I can go back if I miss some of the dialogue. Pull your phone and turn on its flashlight, yeah. Okay. Because I, I wasn't 100% paying attention, I was just reading aloud, so I needed to see. <laughs> Alright, um. I'm not gonna turn on auto because I'm gonna read at my own pace. Alright, it's been years since I've been here, decades even at this point, but I'll always remember the eye bats as one of the first discoveries when I arrived at Gravity Falls. How did you find them in the first place? One got into my house, you see, I was making breakfast one morning and one managed to find my cereal box. When I poured the cereal into the bowl, it came fluttering out, agitated like it belonged there. The nerve. <laughs> you still sound so indignant, even years later that you laugh. Okay. Okay. I wanted to contain it for this further study, but unfortunately it managed to get away. As I thought about it afterwards, its pupil had constricted against the light and familiar to bright light in the kitchen, so either it's nocturnal or it lives in the deepest, darkest cave in Gravity Falls. I found them easily after that. Did you manage to catch one? Somewhat. I came running through this cave with a butterfly net and my wits. I brought a working flashlight that time. They all hid in dark corners. Once I turned the flashlight off, they flocked me. I caught 18 of them that day, but it reminded me of the stealth uses. Uh, the rapid sound of clicking claws against stone startles you. A shiver run up your spine. The dark. You turn off your light. Ford taps your shoulder and just as for you to keep moving forward. Eventually, the narrow passage widens into a large room. The darkness shrouds the source of the dripping water from you. But as your eyes adjust, you squint to see a strange winged shadow. A shadow with eyes that glow red in the near darkness like rubies. Your breath hit catches in your throat as the realization comes over you. Ford is apparently fairly close to you in the room. You find when he speaks a few inches from your shoulder. You catch the shadow of his arm out in a wide arc like he's introducing you to. <laughs> Raven, I'd like for you to meet the moth man. <laughs> he whispers, but even in the dark you see him grinning excitedly at you. Ford looks between you and the Mothman, apparently hoping for a dramatic reaction. Your speechlessness seems to satisfy him. Don't worry, it hasn't noticed us yet. Here's the plan. You make contact with the Mothman and I he pulls out a butterfly net and a large lid jar. Now, where that one came from within his code of mysteries is lost to you. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Okay, wait, 
I get to touch him on the theme <laughs> Well, it's just a moth. It's just a giant moth. It's weird. I'm sorry, I'm not reading out loud right now because my throat hurts. Approach with stealth. Sneaky sneaky. Uh, taking over midnight. <laughs> Okay, use Spawn's Light to attract them towards you and away from forward or run up. So forward and start spawning this monster anyway. This is smarter. You grab your phone and quickly switch the light on, running to forward side and holding it up high. You even attempt to call them over despite knowing they don't respond to sound. Before long, they all crowd around the phone. The light, the sight of light flickering and reflecting off so many small wings would be somewhat captivating if you hadn't just been in the midst of them. Alright, yeah, my throat still hurts. Okay, I'm just gonna... silent read again. <laughs> Commentate here to there. I'm so sorry, guys. I still want to do this, and I'm not gonna do it. Unless it's for the video. Because I've already started, and I'm already this far. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I'm just being freaking dumb right now. I'm sorry. I love stars, so. <laughs> So yeah, that's just what it's talking about. It's just about looking in stars. Okay, yeah. I'm just misunderstanding it. I live in the country, so I go and look at stars regularly every night, too. giggly now. <laughs> I 
I hate to ask this, but if anybody can draw me with Ford, I would love you forever. <laughs> oh my gosh. do I always do I'm a curious cat <laughs> yeah at it. I love it. And I am sorry if anybody was used to me reading it at this point. My throat is so sore and I know I should get a drink. And I know I keep repeating stuff. I'm horrible. I'm horrible. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm not because I am. Jeez. I'm not looking for compliments. That's actually what I don't want. Please don't start compliments in the comments. <laughs> Okay, now we get to ask questions. That's about other creatures. I said to wait, but can I at least get a preview of what I'd be getting into? Not good. Yeah. Probably not. today. Normal is boring anyways. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> okay, we'll just start from top down. I thought so. This is the summer after. So they're 13, going to be 14 when they go home this time. Ah, man.
Yes, please draw me with Ford. Please, please, please. <laughs> this is so cute. I'm just imagine these scenarios. If I was, if I knew how to draw Gravity's art, um, Gravity Falls art style, I'd do it myself. Stars. I like the stars in general. success rate. First part, okay, an hour was a, was the exact length this was gonna be. I didn't know it was gonna take an hour to get past the first part. Call the caterers. <laughs> Looks like this is actually working out. <laughs> and it's Mabel's drawing. Alright, I'm gonna end this one here. I'm gonna get myself a drink and then I'm gonna start recording the next one. I don't know how these are gonna be uploaded yet, but I'm enjoying making this. And I hope everybody watching is enjoying too. And you don't have to draw me with him. I just want to see some drawings of me with him because it'd be so cute. Ugh. Yeah, I think you guys are understanding why Mabel's my favorite of the younger twins. <laughs> Alright. See you guys in the next video and stay weird.